All right, everybody, welcome back to another video. Today, we are going to find out what the hell this is and what it can do. Hey, if it's your first time here, just wanna say welcome. Thanks for checking this out. On this channel, I primarily do things like grain to glass videos, but I also do shorter, more informative videos and product reviews and stuff like that, which is the case for this particular video. If you like that sort of thing, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button. So today we're gonna to be looking at this. This is the Boil Eye Tap, which is a counter pressure bottle filler that acts just as if you were putting another tap into your kegerator. Before we get too much further, I just wanna disclose my relationship with that company. And they, so they sent me a free eye tap. I asked them if I could be objective and critical of their product if needed, and uh, they were more than happy to let me do that. So this is going to be my review of that product. Uh, this company, I believe, is a Russian company. It was shipped to me from Russia. Their website is a bit hard to navigate, but it's overall not too bad. Uh, however, one thing to note is there are multiple versions of this in particular. Uh, depending on what kinds of bottles you use. Uh, so they have the regular 12 ounce or 300 milliliter brown glass bottles. And then there's also um, PET or plastic bottles like soda bottles, uh, which many people do use to bottle their homebrew as well. In other case, you're gonna need a separate one of these um, in order to make sure that you're using the correct uh, system for whatever bottles you would choose to use. Just like any other counter pressure bottle filler, it comes with the ability to purge your bottles of CO, uh, with CO2 to ensure that they don't have any oxygen in them when you're packaging. This is pretty critical. And then also it gives you the ability to pressurize the bottle as you are filling it with liquid, which keeps it from foaming. As such, there's an input for CO2 on this as well as liquid. And then there's a drainage line as well. It's essentially designed to be put into your kegerator just like any other tap. Uh, as you can see, it comes with a beer shank. I am going to make a few modifications to it though before we actually use it. The first thing I'm going to do is take some of these carbonation caps, which you can find uh, at Kegland, and attach them in a way to both the CO2 in and the liquid in uh, posts on this setup. So this way we simply have the ability to just take a disconnect off of a particular keg and plug it into this tap instead of having to actually connect lines with worm clamps and do all that stuff. Uh, so that should save us a great deal of time and make this a little bit more convenient to use. It would be nice to see the uh, ITAP set up like this already. Uh, however, I do understand that there are plenty of reasons why that would not be the case. So now we're gonna go ahead and go over to my kegerator. I'm gonna drill a hole in it and we're gonna install this as if it was a regular tap. Okay, so I've done a couple test runs here and I think I figured this out. So we're gonna use this to bottle up some of my Russian Imperial Stout that's still in the keg. Um, I'm gonna just bottle a couple bottles and let them sit for a couple months, uh, you know, as they continue to age. One thing I failed to mention earlier is just make sure you actually have a tube of some sort running from the bleed line in the back here so that you have a way to vent pressure and also foam out of your counter pressure bottle filler. There is a little bit of a process here, so I'm gonna do my best to explain it step by step to you. And this should also apply for other types of counter pressure bottle fillers. This is uh, pretty much the standard process. So the first thing you're gonna to need to do is make sure that your keg is disconnected from the actual CO2 tank. And then we're gonna to need to make sure that there's a connection to the actual ITAP from the liquid side with a liquid post. Next, we're gonna go ahead and hook up gas to this. And then you should be able to take your bottle and with the ITAP, there's this little system that rotates here at the bottom to achieve a good seal. So you open it all the way and then close it all the way 
and that achieves a good seal against the glass. All right, next we're gonna push this button here and that is going to pressurize the bottle to the same pressure that the keg is at. Now that the bottle has been equalized with the keg, we open the foam valve here on the side. That allows oxygen to escape and allows CO2 to enter and replace the oxygen in the bottle. Therefore, that increases the beer's shelf life. So let this open up and close a couple times. After we're sure that the bottle has been purged one last time, we'll pressurize it. Now making sure that this bleed valve is closed, we're gonna go ahead and open the tap. And as you can see, nothing happens because they're at the same pressure, uh, the keg and the bottle, and it should do that. Now what we're gonna do is slowly open this valve so that it starts to push a little bit of beer very slowly into the bottle. This helps us ensure that we don't have too much foam. All right, so now we go all the way up to the top there. At this point, close our liquid valve. And now we just open this a little bit more. That takes the rest of the pressure out. And it will be a little foamy at first. That's why you have this, this uh, tube here. However, in a couple seconds, most of that foam and extra carbonation should dissipate. There we go, we can see that now. Close the valve one more time and open. And there we have a perfectly balanced and pressure transferred bottle of Russian Imperial Stout. Now at this point you can see the foam that's on top there. That ensures that we're going to stay oxygen free as we cap this. Of course it goes without saying to ensure that your equipment is always sanitized. You want to sanitize the eye tap itself, the inside and all the lines as well as all the bottles and the caps that you'll be using as well. Another thing to note as well is just to be sure that uh, you don't open this valve too much at once and try to fill your bottle fast. As a result, you'll get a lot of foam and you'll end up wasting a lot of beer. And obviously that's not a good thing. But anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and do a couple more of these and uh, see how the uh, rest of this process goes. All right, so what's the final verdict here? So overall, I do really like the product. It is kind of nice having a counter pressure bottle filler just integrated into your Keyser setup. That's a really kind of clever idea. And I really respect the creativity that went into making that happen. So real quickly, pros in this product, um, it integrates directly into your Keyser. That's awesome. Also has the ability to fill both PET bottles and glass bottles. It's also a relatively simple system to hook up and put together. Cons on this one, really, uh, it's made of plastic. Um, that is the pretty much the only con, uh, and it's a big one though. There's certain things you can do with plastic in home brewing and be totally fine with, uh, like fermentation. However, there's other things that you really shouldn't use plastic for. Typically, plastic is used by manufacturers to cut down on costs. However, uh, in this case, it is not actually having that effect. This is being sold for the exact same price as its competition, which has more durable parts. Um, I have issues with plastic parts. They tend to wear very fast. They tend to have issues and break down very fast um, and just not go the long distance that you generally need a piece of equipment that's going to cost you $100 or more to actually go. Um, and there's one more piece to that and that is sanitation. Plastic is basically not a very easy material to sanitize. It's porous and it scratches easily and therefore harbors bacteria and other things like yeast uh, for a long period of time unless you're really, really very diligent about cleaning it. Now that's totally fine if all you're doing with your counter pressure bottle filler is bottling standard ales and lagers. However, I would really start to worry about using this particular system with things like Brett beers, sours, or wild ales, and especially, especially if you find out that you have an infection in your system somewhere and it makes its way through those plastic parts, good luck ever getting it out. 
Because of that nature, it makes it a risk that, God forbid, you ever get an infection in your system and you run it through that piece of equipment, you're gonna have to probably throw it out or buy a new one. Plastic is notorious for holding persistent infections, and to boot, if you ever tried to bottle a sour or a wild ale or something that had a more persistent Brett or lacto strain or something like that in there, basically there's gonna be a chance that whatever beer you bottle down the road after that particular brew uh, is going to get contaminated with the wild yeast or the bacteria that you use for your wild or sour ale. And it's for that reason that I just don't like plastic in brewing when it comes down to this particular part of things. So my message to the Boyle Company, since you did ask me for an honest review, um, is to make your product using at least metal internals uh, so that we can sanitize it in some way, shape, or form to ensure that we don't have infections. I would also like to see the product equipped with disconnects so that we can very easily transition from keg to the actual counter pressure bottle filler instead of having to just hook up hoses and worm clamps every single time. It's a very time consuming process and it kind of makes it inconvenient. Otherwise, I do like the product. I will be keeping it. I will be using it carefully only on uh, non-wild ales and lagers. And it is an effective counter pressure bottle filler. I don't want to slam the company or the product necessarily, uh, but there are things that I do believe that are important that could be improved in this particular system. And it would be awesome to see that. It would be a little bit more competitive if that was the case. Now, if you're in the market for a counter pressure bottle filler, uh, as far as what you want to buy for yourself, I just want to say, do the research and figure out what you need for your particular system. Make sure you do your due diligence and understand how different materials and different parts are going to affect whatever you do in your brew house. Um, and I'm just gonna leave you with that. Anyway, thank you for watching. I hope this was informative. If you want to support the channel, please feel free to pick up some merch, which you can find in the description box area, as well as check out some of those Amazon links for home brewing gear that I do recommend. I also have a Patreon page, which you can find in the description box as well. In addition, if you're interested in following me on social media, I am on Instagram and Instagram only as The Apartment Brewer. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. So until then, cheers.